Wow, I never thought I'd be doing this again, but finally, I believe I've done something right for once. How do you mean, Kev do it? Well, Percy, the last time I did a build video, it was literally a useless build. Just a build that was fun to play as, but not practical. Well, bust my boilers and read me movie spoilers. Why are you going again? Simply because of the elementary fact, Percy, that I needed to change. You see, Percy, I saw, but I did not observe. Observe what? Something deep within me was discovered. Something I needed to fix, Percy. A whole punch through my heart, filled with lies. Lies, Percy! What were those lies you were telling yourself, Kev do it? Well, Percy, that my builds were literally the worst! Hey everyone, I know a few of you are already questioning yourself being here, saying Kev do it is much more of a beginner's guide and tips as a player, but builds? Builds? What kind of garbage is this? But let me tell ya, sometimes you need to branch out, not only to help beginners discover their amazing self in ESO, unless they're an orc, I need to be encouraging people to do something I missed dramatically, hysterically, I mean that you could literally laugh at this. The thing I missed was helping other players achieve builds worthy of causing destruction, teaching people that simply spamming left click like Skyrim ain't gonna get you nowhere. Today I'm gonna show you a build that I've been working on for the past month, figuring out all the little nukes and crannies that needed to be covered, and seeking friends help with making it work. That's right, I'm looking at you, Jess. So anyways, enough of the rambling, let's get into this build video by starting off with the armor and weaponry. I've currently got a mix between heavy and medium armor. My helmet, cuirass, greaves, and sabatons are all a part of the Knight Silence set, giving me extra stamina, stamina recovery, and weapon critical, as well as increase my Mundus Stone effects, which by the way is the Thief, which once again increases my critical damage. Crit is something very important to my build. Now this is where the mix comes in. I have heavy pauldrons of Hunting's Rage, and then medium armor bracers and sash of Hunting's Rage, giving me more weapon critical and maximum stamina. For my weapons, I have a two-handed battle axe and greatsword, both of Hunting's Rage, therefore increasing my overall weapon damage. Then, for agility, I currently have equipped the Necklace of Agility and then two, count them, two Rings of Agility, which, when equipped with three agility items, it reduces stamina cost of abilities, increases your maximum stamina, magicka, and your weapon damage. So now that you all know about the armor and weaponry I'm currently sporting, it's time to dive straight into the build. Most of you know what buffs are, and for those that don't, they are basically handy dandy little enhancers to your attacks. Absolutely needed. I'm not sure how I survived this long without them. It was a dark time. I, I still... I still remember all of my lameness. So, that being said, let's start with the buffing side of my build. So to start things off, you're gonna wanna use the amazing Reaper's Mark, which will expose your enemy's weakness, putting major fracture and major breach upon them, reducing both their physical and spell resistance. If that target dies, you are healed for 60% of your maximum health, and you gain a major berserk, a 25% damage increase for 5 seconds, which is very important when you're finished with the first guy. After that, use Rally, a two-handed weapon buff, which will give you major brutality, increasing your weapon damage by 20% and heal you as the move is in use. Then we hop on over to the Relentless Focus, basically a move that builds you up to a minor berserk and endurance, increasing your damage and stamina recovery. And if you're able to get a few light or heavy attacks in, you'll be granted access to a single shot bow that will instantly cause a heap of damage upon your enemy. Next, we have the Camouflaged Hunter, which gives your attacks a decent percentage chance that you'll instantly cause a great portion of magic damage to your enemies, especially on the Undead and the Daedra. Finally, I have Resolving Vigor, which is a must for a DPS Stamina Nightblade. It's our only decent source of self-healing. Now it's time for Elf Question Session! A question, if I might, Kev do it. Fine, you may speak, question elf, but if it's not good, I'll cut you into small pieces and feed you to my camel! Uh, oh, okay, okay. Kev do it, why must we use an entire slot bar just for buffs? Isn't that a waste of space? Couldn't we use that for another weapon type? Why? Why? Well, it looks like you live another day, High Elf. So the reason that you do this is simply because of the fact that without spending time buffing yourself, your attacks are dull and useless, your role of DPS is lame and worthless, you are worthless to your team, everything you spent your whole life working on is nothing, it's garbage! You'll spend your nights drinking vinegar out of a wooden mug because you have no money to buy water, your clothes will literally rot on your body, and you'll wish that you had never followed Franklin's advice. Because look what that got him. He's an example 
an eternal example. So anyways, moving on, now we're gonna go on to your second skill bar. The first skill that you want in your bar is the move Shadowy Disguise, a morph of Shadow Cloak that makes you invisible to enemies for a short time, and your next attack, within 3 seconds, will always, always, always forever be a critical strike, which will bring you to the brutal side of this Nightblade build. You will use the legendary Wrecking Blow! Wait, hold on, Kim, to it. Th that move. I thought that was only in the children's bedtime stories. I thought it was destroyed. Have mercy on us. Au contraire, little nerd. Where this move goes, only death will follow. Wrecking Blow is a morph of the two-handed weapon skill uppercut, and doesn't just hit or wick, here it says slams your enemy with an upward swing, pulling the whistle of the pain train. It knocks them to the ground and stuns them, plus it empowers you for 5 seconds with your next attack having a 20% increase in damage, which is why you need to proceed to then use Surprise Attack, a shadow move that will slash your enemy for an insane amount of damage, then inflicting major fracture upon them, causing their physical resistance to drop by a ton, for enough time for you to then finish the job using the move Executioner, a morph of the two-handed weapon skill Reverse Slash, which causes a whopping 300% more damage to enemies with less than 50% health. The damage you will be causing will be like, like this! And if your enemy has not been finished off by this explosion of fine mince meat and you've just laid upon them, well then you can just jump back into your shadowy disguise and once again hit them with another wrecking blow. But usually, even if your enemy has around 30,000 health, they will not survive that first attack. Using this technique, I've managed to muster in a beautiful 30,000 to 35,000 damage within one second, my fastest being 0.3 seconds. Now, after you've finished off your target, you find yourself in the middle of a group of people who have just witnessed the utter annihilation of their partner. They'll probably want to see your head on a stick. At this point in my travels, I will proceed to them once again use my cloak to then slip out of the battlefield, but I leave them with a little surprise. I will either use the Dawnbreaker on them if they are already currently low on health, or I'll bring down an entire ice meteor to put upon them the curse of the world's greatest headache causing them to stutter and take frost damage, giving me enough time to then get out, rebuff myself all over again, and then repeat the process. And so there you have it, the brutal smorgasbord assassin. A build that is both stealthy and not at all. But wait, there's more! If you jump into your character's inventory right now, put on a dress, and then go fishing for 17 hours straight, you will gain a whole experience point, and you will... Ah,